Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. I'm making a tutorial series about Luminar Neo. My entire playlist of Luminar uh, Neo videos is there. And so if you're interested in that sort of thing and haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. I've got a lot of Neo videos that are coming. One of the features that has been added to Luminar Neo that was not in the previous version of Luminar, which was known as Luminar AI, is layers. Now layers gives you the ability to do a lot of creative things. However, there are currently in version 1.0.1, which is the most current vision, uh, version as of the recording of this video, um, there are some limitations in terms of what you can and cannot do with layers. So if you're coming from Photoshop and you're an expert in layers and do all that kind of stuff with composite work, it is different. This operates more like what I would call an overlay. If you're familiar with how the texture overlay filter in the local adjustment section of Luminar AI, again, the previous version, if you're familiar with that, then this is gonna be very familiar to you. If you've never used layers before, this will be new to you. Regardless, I'm gonna show you how this works, what you can do and what you cannot do at this time. My hope is some of these other features do get added in the future. Now, if you're not familiar with what a layer is, it's basically you start with your base photo and a layer is another photo or object or something that you place on top of it. And then you can stack multiple layers. And what you do is you blend them either through masking or blend modes so that certain parts of whatever you stick on top end up showing uh, along with what's on the very bottom. So you basically blend different parts of an image together. That's generally how layers work. So you can think of it as like a sheet of paper, but you can adjust the transparency so you can see through the paper above so that you see the stuff below it and certain parts of the one on top. So just think of stacking sheets of paper or stacking transparencies if layers is something new to you. Now, let's take a look at it. I've got a photo here and layers is on the left hand side. So you've got my base photo, which you can see here, and you got a plus sign to add layers. So if you click on that, you'll get a menu that jumps out here on the left. Now there are my images. These are various layers that I've added in part of my experience, and I'll walk through that here in a minute. And then down below, you've got other sections, which you can just click on something and it will apply that on top of your photo. This is basically a flare or a light leak, and you can see that that's on top of my uh, base photo. Now you've got a couple of options over here on this layer, which is you can hide the layer. So I can click that. You'll see the little eyeball has a slash through it, mean, meaning it's hidden, or um, I can show layer. And that is just a right click, by the way. Or you can remove this layer and just take it off your photo and go back to your base shot. I'm gonna do that. And in this particular photo, the first thing I'm gonna do is stick a preset on. I like this fast fix. That preset is now on top of my photo and I've basically adjusted the photo from looking like that to looking like that with one click of a preset. But let's say I wanna add a layer. Let's say I wanna add a texture. Now for textures, these work quite well in this layers implementation in Luminar Neo. So I'm gonna click on the plus to add it. I've got a texture here of my own that I've added and it does save these. So you can go back and get to them. And again, if you right click, you've got the options to hide or remove. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna use this texture. Now you can see that there's these little circles in the corners that basically gives you the ability to come in and move, uh, transform. You can even rotate and things like that in order to get the texture lined up wherever it is on your photo that you want the texture to be lined up. And then also what you will notice is that there is a layers property menu over here on the right hand side. Opacity, as the name implies, uh, creates the ability to see through more of the underlying layer or more of the texture. So higher opacity makes it more opaque, which means you can't see through the top layer because remember the texture is on top, the photos on the bottom. So at 100, all I see is what's on top and at zero, all I will see is what's on the bottom. And so it defaults to 50. I'm gonna leave it there for now. You can see my texture. And if I wanted to, I can open this masking brush option and come in here and do some masking. Now, as of the recording of this video, paint mask is the only option. I'm not gonna mask anything here, but that's the ability to go in and customize or brush in where you want this texture to apply on the photo. But I wanna focus on layers itself and not masking. So a couple of very interesting and useful things. This is the ability to flip the texture layer. In this case, it's a texture, but I'll just say the layer to flip it horizontally. So I can flip it left or right. And this one flips it up or down. In other words, vertically. But one of the key things is here is where it says normal. These are blend modes. Now blend modes basically tell Luminar how to blend your texture in this case or your layer that's on top with the layer that's below it. 
So there's a lot of different blend modes included, not as many in Photoshop, for example, but they come in really handy because they affect how this is gonna look. So if I click on darken, you can see it looks one way, but if I click on lighten, it looks a different way. So there's lots of different options. For this one, screen, I think, looks pretty good. And that has given me a nice blending, I think, of the texture into the photo. And then again, once again, you can come in and adjust opacity to increase the visibility or the amount of that texture seeing or, or decrease it in this case. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 50. So that's a quick demo of basically how layers works in the current version of Luminar Neo, which is effectively the launch version. Now, there are some things that will need to be added for this to really become a true layers functionality with a lot more power because right now it's basically acting like an overlay tool with some nice controls, but there are some things missing that you're gonna want to have or that you may actually need depending on what it is you want to do. Some of the things that are missing currently is there's no way to merge layers, there's no way to stamp layers, there's no way to rasterize layers, there's no adjustment layer, and a transparent PNG doesn't work either. So let me just remove this and let me show you what I'm talking about. I've got that photo, base photo, with the edit of uh, one preset applied to it, which is the fast fix. Now let's say I wanna go in and add a transparent PNG. That's this, this is a photo of myself. Sorry, you're looking at me basically twice, but that is a transparent background PNG, which I create many times in order to create a thumbnail for my YouTube videos. I'll have a photo of myself, I'll create a transparent background so I can lay it on top of the photo for my thumbnail. Anyway, the point is, it's showing up with a bit of a white background as opposed to the transparent background. So it's not currently recognizing transparent PNGs. If I go all the way to 100, you can see it's showing a white background, not a transparent one. My hope is that will be fixed in the future. Now here's another thing. I've got this image layer, and one reason you might want to add a new image layer is in order to do an exposure blend where you have a couple of different exposures at different exposure times, and maybe you want the sky in one and the foreground in the other. Here's an example of that. I like this sky in this photo, but I took another exposure that was a bit longer, and that gave me a brighter foreground. Maybe I'd like to blend those together in order to kind of get the best of both. You can do that, However, there's a limitation. Let me show you that. So if you click on layers, I've already done this, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and click and add that photo. So let me show you. If I turn this off, hide layer, you can see the foreground is dark. In fact, the entire photo is darker because this is the underlying base layer, which is darker. I like the sky and the buildings in this uh, base layer. Let me turn back on the top layer. And when I turn this back on, you can see it's a little bit brighter in the foreground. So this is where you can blend the exposures. And again, the masking capability is not very advanced. So right now, you would have to do this with a brush, but I'm gonna come in and click on paint. And what I'm gonna do is basically paint the top layer on top of the bottom layer. So I'm blending these two exposures, but there are some inherent limitations which I wanna talk about here. So let me get that blended together. Let's just pretend that that is um, a great job. And now what I've got is, close this masking menu, I've got the bottom portion, the water, from my top layer, and I've got the top part from my bottom layer, if that makes sense. So if I turn this off, hide layer, you will see the foreground got darker because that is the base layer with a shorter exposure time, therefore a darker foreground. And what I did is I took this same image at a longer exposure, I put it on top, I painted it in just to the foreground. Let me turn that back on, show layer, and you can see the foreground has now gotten brighter. Now you can do blend modes and opacity, and in fact, I'll go to 100 opacity, that actually shows it better. That's the full effect of that top photo with the brighter foreground being applied to the base photo. So again, let me turn this off, hide layer. That's a better visual, actually. So there it is, that's the base photo. And then now I turn this back on. That's the painted in bottom portion of the top photo. I hope that makes sense. So it lined up automatically because these were automatically, uh, or these were shot on a tripod, just different exposure times. So they already line up. So that's a challenge. There's no auto alignment or anything like that. So if you're wanting to do exposure blends, it can be kind of challenging if things aren't perfectly aligned. It also could be challenging to mask them together because as of right now, you only have a brush mask. Now my hope is when Mask AI comes out, this will be easy to select and I also am hopeful that we'll get more controls over the layers. 
The reason I th say that is because here, let's say I've got this photo now, which is my blended photo, and I wanna go edit it. Well, I don't have the ability to go add an adjustment layer. So any adjustments that I make are only going to adjust the layer that I'm on, which is the top layer. What I need is the capability to squish them together, to merge or stamp these layers, and then go in and basically apply those edits, which would be on top of the blended photo. As it stands now, I can only adjust the image layer that I'm on. So let me show you with Accent AI. If you look at it, I'm gonna drag this all the way to 100 just for effect, and it's only gonna impact the bottom portion of the photo because that's what I masked in. That's the layer that I'm on. So let me show you. See how that's operating? It's only doing that. So in other words, if I wanted to come in and apply edits to this entire photo, I don't have a way to do that because the way this is set up without an adjustment layer, I can't get above my blended photo and apply adjustments across all of it. I hope that makes sense. So right now it's it's very capable for like an overlay or a texture, but if you want to do blended exposures, there are some limitations. And if you wanted to do something like a double exposure, which is kind of like what I was showing you a moment ago when I had the transparent PNG, again, you're going to have some challenges because you can't get a adjustment layer on top of your blended photo in order to adjust the whole thing. To make that super obvious, let me just convert this to black and white. Let's say I like my blended photo, I want it to be black and white. Well, when I click convert to black and white, again, all I'm getting is this top layer. I don't have a way to get above it and convert both at the same time. So an adjustment layer would be necessary here. Well, not really an adjustment layer, but if I could just merge layers and then go apply edits with the various tools here in Luminar Neo on top of my blended merged or stamped image, that would be ideal. But that's an inherent limitation in the way Neo is using layers today. I'm hopeful that we will get additional capabilities so that we can really have a true full layer workflow so that you can do full composites and things like that where you need to blend multiple layers and then get above them and do edits and things like that. But as of right now, it's not available to us. There also may be instances when you need to duplicate or copy a layer and you don't have that control. Again, uh, when you right click, you can hide or remove layers, but there may be instances when you wanna duplicate something and you don't have that capability yet either. Again, I'm hopeful that they're gonna further enhance this because in Luminar 4, which was two versions ago, you had all these capabilities in layers. So I'm hopeful that they will come in and further refine this and give us more of these tools that we can use to do the really layered and creative kind of workflow stuff that we may wanna do. Okay, so that's a primer on layers, how they currently work in Luminar Neo, what you can do and what you may not be able to do at this time. Again, I'm hopeful that this will change over time and I'm more than happy to come back and do more videos about layers, but I was getting a lot of questions about how do they work? What can you do with them? Here's a couple of examples of what you can do and how it works. Hope it gives you some ideas about what you could do with your own photos. Thanks for watching my friends. I really appreciate that. By all means, leave any comments down below. Love interacting with you all. Thanks for the support. Thanks for viewing my videos. I'll be back soon with more Neo stuff. Till then, you guys take care of yourselves and adios.